Here's an example of what we would call a hydraulic lift. And this shows two pistons inside the cylinder. So this part is the piston and this is the cylinder. And this is just a cross-sectional view of the cylinder. The cylinder is really round, it's completely enclosed, and it doesn't leak. It's an it's a airtight or watertight seal between the piston and the cylinder. So the, the piston here slides up and down, but nothing leaks out. And inside the, inside the cylinder, underneath the piston, is some fluid. So I'll draw some fluid in here, and I'll, I'll just color it orange so you could see it. But it's filled. it fills this space inside, and it runs all the way through this line over to the other cylinder. And so this cylinder is filled here with fluid also. Now you can think of one of these cylinders as the input and one as the output. And typically the small one is the input and we apply a force down on this cylinder F. And the result is a much larger force over at the output cylinder. And here's why. The cylinders, as you can see them drawn here, have different areas. One is small and one is large. Now let's suppose that we have a, a force down here of 10 pounds and suppose this area right here the area that that force is applied on is is uh, one square inch so that's the area of the cylinder so when you push down on that cylinder that causes a pressure down here in the fluid of of ten pounds per square inch and that pressure is transmitted through the fluid to all the fluid all over on the other side so everywhere in here this fluid is pushing out, it's pushing upward on the on the other cylinder, it's pushing outward on the walls of the container everywhere with a, f with a pressure of 10 pounds per square inch. Even on the inner walls of the fluid line here, there's a pressure of 10 pounds per square inch. Now let's suppose that over here, on the right side, which we could think of as the output side on the right side, let's suppose the area is 20 square inches. Well you can think of the math pretty easily. If the, if the pressure is 10 pounds per square inch and there are 20 square inches, so just think of that, 20 square inches and 10 pounds on each of them, then it's a force of 200 pounds. So we've taken our original force of 10 pounds and we've produced a force of 200 pounds. 20 times as much force. And the reason there's 20 times as much force is because there's 20 times as much area over here. The pressure inside the fluid here is pushing upward. It's the same pressure that there is over here, but it's pushing upward on 20 times the area. So there's 20 times the total force. Now the trade-off is that even, even though there's 20 times as much force, it only moves 1 20th of the distance. So you could push this down uh, 20 inches on this side and it, it would only go up 1 inch on the right. But the gain is you get a much larger force. So you can lift things like large automobiles and things like that. When you take your car into the shop, it's typically a hydraulic lift that lifts it up. It's a device similar to this, and it's not a person standing over here pushing down, but a machine is pumping some fluid in and exerting a downward force or exerting a force somewhere that causes an increase in pressure, and that pressure is multiplied by a larger surface area to generate a very large force to lift up something very heavy.